Salutations. I should like to apologise for the lack of uploads recently. For the past few months I have found myself with precious little time. Rest assured that content is in the works. In the meantime, I thought it appropriate to slake your thirst for wisdom with a reading. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. We can now go on to discuss the views that in Mahayana are more closely connected with our last considerations. Here, a single term marks the ultimate essence of every state, object, or phenomenon of internal or external experience. Tathata, a term as difficult to translate as it is to express the state of rarefied illumination from which it takes its sense. The English translators use, for Tathata, the term thatness or suchness, the German suheit. The word denotes this, the quality of that which is perceived, insofar it is directly and evidentially perceived, as a subject of pure experience, of simplicity, of impersonal transparency. This quality, moreover, understood to be its own substratum, devoid of conditions and of generation that is expressed by the term svayampu, frequently associated in the texts with Tathata. Tathata appears as a primary element, beyond every qualification of experience as world of I or of non-I. In these texts, the normal designation used for an awakened one, or a Buddha, is Tathagata, a word that in the ancient books of the canon could be translated as accomplished one, but that here assumes a more special sense. The Tathagata is one who has thus gone, becoming the this, the this is the equivalent of his actual illumination, conceived as an inexpressible and simple existential state. The Awakened One is not an I and does not have illumination, he is the Tathata, the very substance of the knowledge that goes beyond, the Prajna Paramita. For him, every content of experience, every objectivity, becomes resolved into this substance, and therefore into something existing as pure evidence, that is not susceptible of name, sign, or definition, that is imponderable, that is, like the non pareil, that is Tathata. These expressions are found thus in one text. All objects and states are unthinkable, imponderable, immeasurable, uncountable, like the non pareil. These are the objects and the states of the Tathagata, unthinkable because the mind has attained calm, imponderable through surmounting the possibility of being weighed. Unthinkable and imponderable are designations for what consciousness comes to attain. Similarly immeasurable, uncountable, like the non pareil these are the properties of the Tathagata, because of a counting and measuring by peers who have attained calm and neutrality. Thus, perfect illumination neither takes nor leaves any object. Experience develops, that is to say, as if in an ether light, that knows no change or motion, like a flower opening from the abyss. The condition of perfect illumination, or of knowledge that goes beyond, is in fact related to Akasha, the ether, of which we have already spoken, and the truth announced by the Bodhisattva, by those who are illumination in substance and who move towards perfect awakening, is that form has the nature of ether, feelings, perceptions, tendencies, consciousness, have the nature of ether, such is the nature of every thing or state. They do not come, they do not go, they are like space, like ether. They are resolved in the void, in the signless, in the without tendency. For them, there is no other law. In similar terms, the nature itself of an awakened one is defined. Why the name of Tathagata? Because it expresses the true Tathata, because it has no origin, because it is the destruction of qualities, because he is one who has no origin, and non-origin is the highest aim. At this height, every form or state or phenomenon or element, every dharma appears, through its own nature, as vivikta or detached, freed from its individuality, both in the world that was once without, and also in the interior of the accomplished one. Disindividualization, resolution in the void, in the signless, and in the without tendency, then reaches the highest regions, dissolves them, removes the final limit, and prepares for a unity that, though entirely transcendent, is at the same time entirely imminent. To resolve all residue of duality, to make the state of Nirvana something that devours all without residue, to make of it the end of the world, that which in reality leaves nothing behind, then Nirvana itself, and with it the Awakened One, the Tathagata, must be freed from individuality, that is, from the signs on account of which they might have an other in opposition. 
The nirvana that early Buddhism wished to protect by wrapping it in silence and a refusal to speak of it is here the target of a speculation that reaches the height of paradox. This is what we read. The this, Tathata, of the Tathagata is the this of everything, phenomenon, or state. And the this of everything, phenomenon, or state is the this of the Tathagata. And the this of everything, phenomenon, or state, and the this of the Tathagata, that in fact is in its turn the this of the Tathagata, the this of the Tathagata and the this of everything, phenomenon, or state, that in fact is a single this, without duality, without plurality, is a this devoid of dyads. And again, that which has been announced by the Tathagata as perfect illumination is announced by the Tathagata as not perfect illumination, and for this very reason it is called perfect illumination. A theme that is repeated for the whole series of other elements and for the attributes themselves of an awakened one, of a Buddha, that which has been announced by the Tathagata as the quality of a Buddha is announced by him as not a quality of a Buddha, and for this very reason is called a quality of a Buddha. To remain in the void is to remain in perfect illumination, in transcendent knowledge. In it dwells the Bodhisattva, not in the world of senses, not in a special state of ascetic realization or in its fruits, not even in Buddha-ness, nor is this all. There is no knowledge, there is no ignorance, there is no destruction, there is no knowledge, there is no attainment of nirvana. A man who has only approached transcendental knowledge still remains shut in by his mind. But when the shell of his mind is destroyed, he becomes free from all fear. He is carried beyond the world of change and attains the ultimate nirvana. If one asks, is there anything that has been announced by the Tathagata, the answer, definite as it is disconcerting is, no, nothing has been announced by the Tathagata. Again, if anyone were to say that the Tathagata goes or comes, stands or sits or lies, he would not have understood the meaning of my teaching. Why? Because the word Tathagata says that he is going nowhere, that he is coming from nowhere, and that for this reason he is called the Tathagata, the blessed and perfect illuminated one. Uh, 